Amnesia the Bunker has finally come out and takes the series forward, sideways, and in several new directions. Oh. Most noticeably, giving us the most scariest thing of all in an Amnesia game. The ability to actually use a weapon and try to fight off the things coming at you. Oh dear. Back. Oh dear. Oh crap. <laughs> Ow. When it comes to the Amnesia franchise, I've never been a huge fan of it. Particularly because I always felt that the focus on kind of set piece horror kind of distracted from the moment to moment and gameplay potential. And for those of you who are fans wondering what my overall metric of the series is, I can tell you that I did not enjoy Amnesia Rebirth. So it is with a lot of surprise I found myself really getting into Amnesia the Bunker. While it may not be the perfect, grandest survival horror game of the year, it does present a very interesting mix of designs, most notably of that of games like Alien Isolation and the style of hide-and-seek horror of Puppet Combo, such as with Nun Massacre and Stay Out of the House. To wit, our story is that we are a French soldier in World War I. When we are gravely wounded in combat, we are taken to a bunker to recover. And when we wake up, we find that, well, everyone is either dead or a fled. The exit is barricaded. Oh, and there's this strange monster who's trying to rip our head off, stalking us in the dark. And from there, the game begins. Your mission is to get out of the bunker. And one of the first things Amnesia the Bunker does differently from the previous games is that it presents a very different structure to it. You are not going to be exploring various set pieces and going from one to the next and never returning. Instead, the entire game is centralized around the bunker itself, which is made up of a central hub and several offshoots. In each offshoot, there is an item or items that you need to make progress and get the materials necessary to destroy the debris blocking the exit, which will get you out. As an interesting note, the game will randomly place kind of minor items and notes throughout the world at the start of a new game or a new playthrough. The major items, the ones that are mission critical, are in fixed locations. And this is designed to give you some element of replayability. Now, with the enemy designs, and for the first time in an Amnesia game, we can talk about enemy designs. You have rats that will kind of congregate around corpses, and they will bite you if you get too close. But the main event here is the beast itself. The beast will track you through noise. And that can be anything from running, jumping, throwing winding up the world's loudest hand crank flashlight imaginable. And once it knows you're in the general area, it will pop out of one of its many hidey holes and will start stalking you. Now, unlike some of the other games that kind of follow this motif, the enemy itself can be engaged with in different ways. You can use traps throughout the bunker in order to slow down or stun them. You can craft weapons and, like I said in the Stinger, actually use a gun in an Amnesia game to fight. Bullets are probably the rarest currency in this world, and you're going to have to be very careful as to what you can use. While the main quote-unquote puzzles and items that you need have a fixed way of getting to them and a fixed solution, you are given some freedom in terms of how you want to approach other things, how you deal with a locked door or a barred area. And the game does not get into immersive sim territory. If you're looking for this to be like the next Thief for Prey, or even again, something like Stay Out of the House, it doesn't go quite that far. 
but that also means it's a little bit more approachable compared to the puppet combo stuff. And I like this kind of resource management tension that Frictional have created for this one. You have a lot of resources that you can gather, healing, fuel, explosions, and so on. But everything is a limited commodity, and you're going to have to make that decision as to when and where to use something. Attacking the monster and dealing enough damage will force it to flee, giving you a few precious minutes of just complete freedom to do whatever you want within the bunker. But it will come back. The dynamic of how lighting works also is a very interesting take. You have in the central area a generator that powers the entire bunker. When the lights are on and working, the beast is more passive, and unless you do something like just like jump up and down or run around a hole somewhere, it won't come out to say hi. When the lights are off, however, it is far more aggressive and will come out and search for you quite readily. However, to power the generator, you'll need fuel, and at the start of the game, fuel is limited, but there are ways of gathering more throughout the space and of course getting access to more items and means of dealing with it. And that, again, gives this game a far more, I think, personal feel to it compared to some of the other horror games where, again, it's basically monster sees you, it's game over. Now, the footage that you've been seeing throughout this review was played on hard difficulty, which limits the number of save points and it does make the monster far more aggressive and far more happy to come out and try and find you. So with everything said so far, Amnesia the Bunker definitely presents itself obviously very differently from the previous games. And it doesn't leave me with a lot of I think long form complaints about the design. If I had any issues, the first one would be that as I said a few minutes ago, it doesn't quite get to immersive sim territory. There are some cases where it just felt like the game was kind of fighting my willingness to experiment. In one example, there was a locked wooden door, so I thought, well, why don't I just pour oil on it and try to light the door on fire? Didn't work. There are several cases where very creative players can do a lot in this game. But as I've said, when it comes to the main path and your main objectives, you're not going to find multiple solutions to them. And because of that, it does limit the replayability of Amnesia the Bunker. Once you've gone through this game once and you know the major items, you know what you need to do to get them, it really becomes just following a very simple set of instructions even with minor items that are randomly placed or randomly moved around on a new playthrough. And I'm not a fan of games where lighting and light and visibility is a resource to manage. The earlier Amnesia games started to give me very major headaches if I play them for too long because of the sandy effects and low lighting. Thankfully this one does not have the sandy effects, but if you are sensitive to like lighting and low visibility in your games like me, it can be a little bit annoying. And again, the solution of course is to keep the lights on, keep those generators running. But until you learn the game and kind of get past that first major hurdle, it can be a bit frustrating to play. And when I was playing this game, I actually gave up on my first play, and I had to look up where one of the early, kind of essential items for casual play are, which I won't spoil in this video here. But once I got past that hurdle, it became a lot easier to play, and I was able to engage with the game more. Now with the Beast's AI itself, it definitely does not get into, again, like, stay of the house territory. This is certainly not like a Skynet level threat. The monster will behave in very fixed ways, and there are fixed events or scripted events that will pull him out, and there's not much you can do about other than to trigger them, and then leave the area, let the event run, and then come back. 
if you're hoping again to have like that level of like pure cat and mouse or you know hunter becomes the hunted kind of thing again you're not going to find that here and amnesia the bunker is by far the smallest of the games to date there are people who have done speed runs within maybe 10 to 15 minutes. There may even be quicker speedruns by the time you're watching this review. But I do really like this concept. I've been dreaming of kind of a square down, almost roguelike horror game experience for some time. And Amnesia the Bunker comes really close to that. There is the capability or the option to create modded maps and submit modded files through the Steam Workshop. And I wonder how people will approach this. Because I think having this small game space but making it very replayable and giving the player multiple ways of getting through it and dealing with the various puzzles and hazards could be a very unique step forward for horror. With everything said, whether or not you're going to enjoy this one, I think it's going to come down to what you're looking out of a horror game and out of an amnesia style game. If you're hoping for, again, a huge focus on kind of storytelling, mood, very unique set pieces and vignettes within the world, you're not going to find that much here. At most, it's going to be notes and easter eggs that go back to some of the earlier games. But if you're someone who is kind of interested in this kind of hide and seek horror, again, of the likes of Alien Isolation and Puppet Combo, but found those games to be either too demanding or too like min-maxi to play, then I would recommend checking this one out. Even if you just play this on the easier setting, it still presents a very different package and one, again, that I hope we see Frictional expand on in the future. Maybe someday we'll get a new Penumbra game, and there will be elements of this in there. With that said, we're going to wrap up this review here. I'd like to thank developers for giving me a press key to check this one out. By the time you're watching this, my written review should be up on Game Wisdom. Be sure to do all the YouTubing stuff people tell you to do. Visit our Discord and Patreon. If you're interested in more of my thoughts on design, especially my book on horror design, be sure to check them out wherever books are sold, and come back for daily discussions on game design here and on Game Wisdom, where some of the art and science of games.